Hey guys, so welcome back to uh, another vlog. Today's video is going to be a vlog. Um, you should have just seen me doing a big like speed clean and tidy of my pretty much my whole house. Trying very hard to get some sort of organisation going. Um, so I just had like a big 30 minute like get all the jobs done that I've been putting off for ages. Um, I changed the bed and, and did you know some organising in my drawers and just put everything away that's been cluttering up my life and my brain for the last few days. Um, so actually organisation is probably going to be the theme of this vlog because I really wanted to talk to you guys about my bullet journal. We are now in February so I, I've kind of like skipped an entire month out but I'm not going to let that bother me too much. My whole theme of this is that I'm just going to use it as a tool. It's not going to be too precious or perfect. There are so many incredible bullet journals out there and I've kind of recently got a little bit addicted to watching like spread videos and flip throughs. They're mostly like therapeutic to me. I find them really relaxing, just watching someone like write and draw and organize their life. Um, but watching them all, I kind of decided that my bullet journal was gonna be less decorative and more productivity based. So I'm gonna just flip through this and show you guys what I've done. So this is my bullet journal. This is from Paper Chase and it's I think from the Agenzia range, I've had this for a few years now um, that I've been collecting bullet journal supplies and it's just very plain and simple and black. I did have this journal as well which is a Lechtern, Lechtern. Um, this is like the original I think actual bullet journaling planner but I decided at the last minute that I thought this was a bit too small. The squares on this are a lot more widely spaced than the Paper Chase one. If I open this up on a blank page, you can see that they are a lot smaller compared to this one here. So I kind of like that because I thought there would be more room. The pages are also slightly bigger, I think as well. So I just wanted a bit more freedom to actually use a lot of space. So let me start at the beginning. There's a lot of this that I've kind of skipped past. I haven't written my name on here yet because that's quite daunting to me to mark a notebook with your name. Um, the index, I thought I would use, this one has like a pre-made index uh, on lined paper instead of dotted but I haven't even opened this, so I don't think that's gonna be something I'm utilizing in my bullet journal. So this is the first spread that I've actually drawn on. This is the very first page, and in the videos I was watching, I saw a lot of these grid planners. Now, I didn't know how useful this would come in, but I decided to just put it on the first page in case I wanted to flip back and check it for reference, and basically you list out the number of squares in order to make it a lot easier for you when you come to like planning grids and splitting up your page. So I've got everything listed here. My uh, bullet journal has 52 by 35, which is actually quite a lot. So I've split that into two and then I have a slightly lighter pen here where I've done like thirds and quarters. I, I have flicked back to this quite a bit just to kind of work out where I need to draw my grids. So it's not been completely useless. Um, the key here is where I got a little bit fancy. I thought, hey, why not? I'm gonna draw something. You will see that I've mainly stuck to black and white, especially at the beginning of this, because I wanted to keep it very simple. Again, I thought when I was including colors, it was just gonna detract from the actual purpose of this. And um, as far as the key goes, I'm using this, but it is my first bullet journal, so I'm not sure if maybe like, I'll adapt this to my own. This was like a basic, very standard key. So that's the first two pages. So here we have my 2020 overview, which is what I've called this. This is basically my future log, which I think is one of the most important parts of a bullet journal. So this was a page or a double spread page I definitely wanted. Basically, I just have every single month of the year. There's a calendar here, which I can refer back to when I'm doing my monthly and weekly spreads. And then I've just listed important dates. So I've got times that I'm away, I'm traveling, people's birthdays, events that I have coming up. And that just helps like keep an overview of the year and keep all the big things organized. I did a very basic version of this, as you can see, despite this taking me a really long time. And I've just kept it again, very simple, like monochrome, black and white. I will talk a little bit about the tools that I use. I have this very cute little pencil case. Um, I'll let you guys know what I have in there after I've gone through this. But yeah, I just used a brush pen and something really small nibbed to do these tiny little dates. I've also got this piece of washi tape here, just sort of stuck 
to the edges so I can refer back to this because it's something that I do reference quite a bit. So the next two pages are kind of more like my own life things. I've got some goals for 2020 here, some resolutions and things like that. It's just stuff like read some books, post consistently on YouTube, we'll see how that goes. Um, and some other like personal things there too. This I quite liked. I wanted to keep track of the actual books I was reading. It looks a bit bare at the moment, but hopefully it'll be full very soon. So I just kind of went alternate lines and did like a wash of this light gray marker that I have which kind of breaks it up a bit. I'm still not very used to writing on non-lined paper so that helps me out and I, I like the way it looks. I only have the one book up here and my little rating too so I'm looking forward to filling that up. I did actually have a practice run. This here was a really cheap little dotted notebook that I got from Muji and I sort of planned out a lot of the pages and spreads that I wanted before actually going into my bullet journal. This was quite handy because I didn't know what order I wanted to do them in but I just listed them and then as I was kind of writing in the main thing I could refer back to this. I also used this for just like some doodling and planning and working out you know, exactly what I wanted to do, which was quite useful. I didn't feel like the fear of actually taking pen to paper on the real thing. So I did make quite a long list of different spreads and pages I wanted to try out. Already I can see that some of them are not going to be used. This is the things to see and do. Um, I just thought I'd keep this to write down, you know, a book that I saw that I wanted to read, something that I wanted to watch on TV, um, a place to go and eat. So I feel like over the year this could fill up a bit more, um, but it's kind of just a place to like organize some of my thoughts. This side is a finances page, which is empty because I haven't gotten around to it. I kind of messed up a little graph here, so I just stuck some black paper on. And with this spread, it's kind of like a very black and white moment. I've got these dark filled in headers and I used a white pen on top. I don't think I have the best white pen because it didn't do a great job. So that's maybe something I'll avoid in the future. You can also see my extremely poor attempt at calligraphy at the top here. Um, so this is one that I quite like. This is a content calendar. So it's very similar to the future log, but it's entirely for my YouTube videos. So I post or I try to post twice a week. So I've literally listed out every Monday and Friday for the entire year. It took me so long by the way to actually work out how many spaces and grids I actually had to do this to make it like perfectly symmetrical. So I've got the dates of each one split up into months and then I just write in either what I've posted or what I'm going to post. I'll probably fill this one up more with pencil because I don't ever really know what I'm gonna post until you know a few days before but it's a good way to kind of see what I've done, what I have coming up and to know all the different dates that I should also be posting. So I've got a little Muji washi tape marker here as well because I do go back to that one quite a bit. So I had some like extra pages here. I just wanted something quite plain that I could write on. So I've got video ideas and then a brain dump. I have yet to use these, but I'm sure this one will fill up quite quickly. And then I think a brain dump is quite an interesting thing. I probably wouldn't do it every month, but you know, sometimes you just need to write stuff down, <laughs> whether that's a to-do list or something coming up in the future. So it's, it's good to have that there. I've also decorated these ones with a sad little leaf doodle because that's about all I can manage. So here we are in February. This is my first monthly spread. I wanted to start fresh so I just did it on this side and I've got some little leafy bits going on here again. By the way, leaves and foliage are the easiest thing to draw. So if you want something decorative but you struggle with drawing skills, these are the easiest thing ever. Um, this is where I've started introducing color. So I've got just February listed out there, all the dates of the month. And then this is probably my favorite page. This is my monthly calendar. So we've got the entire month of February laid out here with some good sized boxes so I can really kind of go into detail on what's going on on those days. I like to keep my workouts here so I can keep track of what I've done and what I'm doing. And then like dates that I'm traveling, holidays when Sam's working in a way, um, and just like birthdays and things like that. Pancake day, very important. So down here I had some extra space, and this is where I decided to do my habit tracker. I originally wanted this to be a full page spread, and it's one of those very like typical bullet journal pages um, that everyone seems to do. And in the end I just went for something quite simple. I just listed the dates of the month and then the habits I wanted to track and I've just been filling it in with a dot every day. I quite like that. And then over on this side, I just had some extra space for my goals of the month and then things that I really need to do. 
And then down here I have a more in-depth version of my content calendar. So where I've been planning my videos. This one is just for the month of February. So I've written down the dates. We have Mondays and Fridays here. Um, what I'll be putting up on that day. And then I have this little tick box. This is for when I filmed, edited and uploaded. So there's three like basic tasks when it comes to making a video and getting onto YouTube. I actually can tick one of these off with you guys. I have filmed my one and five minute makeup routine. That is what I was doing this morning. I was gonna do a proper plan with me video and sort of draw this out with you guys, but not only did it take me hours to do some of these spreads, I also kind of like tilt the book and I properly lean over and it, it would have just looked really bad on video. So maybe we'll try something like that in the future, but this one I just had to do by myself. So I've kind of gone for a color scheme. You can see with February, it's this like very muted pastel tan color. And I've sort of kept that running throughout the month. So these are some more like brain dumpy type pages. I've got the highlight of my day, which I saw somebody had done on Pinterest and I thought it was a really great idea. It's a way to be a bit more reflective and practice some gratitude, which you know, never goes amiss. So I've just listed out the dates of the month. I started this a bit late, you can see. And um, have just written like one line for every day of something that I was grateful for, something that was like the highlight of my day, even if it's just catching up on Love Island. <laughs> and then here I've kept a little box or a list for my February favorites. I'm gonna try and do favorites videos every month now. So I thought just keeping track of everything throughout the month instead of getting to the end and then having to rack my brains and, and go through what I've been using all month. So that takes us over to my first weekly spread. I've kept this very simple. I'm gonna try and adapt as I go and see what I really need in terms of weekly spread because this will be my most used thing. Um, so I've gone for a very simple Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I've already noticed that there's a lot of space, blank space here because you know, every day I don't necessarily have lots of to-dos. I maybe have one thing that I'm focusing on and this gets kind of left. I did start um, doing a time blocking plan for the days of the week that I needed it, which is so helpful for me. You can see up here, this one is a bit more of a busy day and time blocking I find really helps my productivity levels and I can get so much more done when I know when I'm doing it and when it needs to be done by. So I've just listed out the hours in the day from eight o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock at night and I fill in the tasks I need to do. Here I have noted down everything that I need to do today. Um, so smaller tasks here as well that don't necessarily make it into the time blocking. I've also noticed as well now that I've drawn this out that I'm probably not gonna use this Saturday and Sunday box. I already made it smaller, but you know, there's just not a lot going on on my weekends, planning and work-wise. So I've got my Tesco's delivery here and that's about it so far. I also wanted a place for tasks that were, you know, to think about for next week that I hadn't decided on a day to do yet. So I have started planning next week and I've changed it slightly. So I've still got my Monday through Friday here and I'll do my time blocking as I go. And then Saturday and Sunday are a lot smaller and I've made myself a box for next week. So if something comes to mind or something gets switched over, I can just note it down in this box and I can refer back to that when I'm setting up next week's spread, which I have yet to do. So that is what I have done so far. That is my flip through. I definitely am really enjoying using this. When I started with all these like yearly pages, I wasn't necessarily picking it up a lot, but now that I'm planning this and using it daily, it's pretty much been attached to my side. So I'm really happy with this weekly spread in particular. So that is what's inside. So let's talk stationery next. I have this very small little pencil case to not overwhelm myself with too much. I think if it fits in here, I'll use it. If not, it's gonna be just, you know, excessive. So inside here, I have quite a few of these Tombow brush marker pens. These are very popular for bullet journaling. Um, I got some like neutral, easy colors. They're great because they have a brush tip on one side and then the other is a little felt pen. These you can see I was trying out here on this uh, paper. So they give like a really nice thick line and there's some really gorgeous colors there. So that's gonna be my color scheme, I think, for my bullet journal. Keeping it neutral. Um, and then also in here, I got a few pens 
and bits from Muji. I think Muji is so great for stationery. I've got a little click up technical pencil. I've got two rollable pens. I do favor a rollable over a fine liner. I just prefer the way they write. So I've got a 0.7 and a 0.38. This one is a lot thicker. So you can see it kind of gives a thicker line. This one is so thin. It's great for like everyday writing. This is the pen that I use the most. And it really helps when you're doing like those tiny little numbers. Um, you can really fit them all into a page, especially as my bullet journal has the smaller squares. And then I have a couple of other bits in here. I've got a ruler, which is actually a very difficult ruler to use. I wouldn't recommend it. I bought it because it was pretty and you know, it was massively style over substance. Tibex little mouse because I often have been making mistakes. That's why I've started using things like pencil first. I've got this white gel pen. This is from Uniball. It's not the best. Like I said, it didn't really work the way I wanted it to. So I'm on the lookout for a better one. And then a rubber, of course, to rub out all my pencil markings first. On to what I think is probably my fourth outfit change of the day. It's been a busy day. Um, I've been trying some stuff on that I got to pick out from Topshop, which is very cool. I am really into this look. This is a little bit different for me. So let me just wait for the drilling outside to stop before I show you this outfit. There we go. Okay. This is um, kind of like based around there. It goes again. It's like a shacket shirt leather jacket. 90s Ross Geller in an early episode of Friends. I am surprised at how much I like it actually. I went for a size up because I wanted it to be that big oversized look, which I think is key when you're looking for like a shirt jacket or something similar. I really like it. It's fake leather, it's faux, it's not real. Um, so it was actually quite reasonably priced and I think the quality is great. So I got it on with a very simple like t-shirt and trousers look. I really like these trousers, especially paired with these boots. These I've actually um, already had, they're from Arquette. They're my big like stumpy, chunky boots, which I seem to be wearing with everything at the moment. But these trousers are cool. They're like a little bit high-waisted, they're tapered, so they're not really wide-legged but you know, they have like room to them. They have some movement and some give and I actually really, really like them. Definitely all about the comfy trousers these days. And then this t-shirt is like a pretty standard crew neck. It's quite good for tucking actually because it's very, I wouldn't say cropped, but it's a lot shorter. It actually has a raw hem. So you can literally just tuck it in really easily. No like big material like bulking up your waistband. So yeah, that's um, what I have just thrown on quickly because I have just realized <laughs> Then I need to go out and buy Joe a Valentine's card. I don't think we're going to do presents. Although every time we say we're not going to do presents, I end up getting surprised by one and <laughs> feeling really guilty. We're actually going away for Valentine's this year, which will be nice. I've never really done anything before for Valentine's Day, so this is new to me. Um, so that's kind of like our present to each other, which should be nice. But I feel like I need a moment to recenter and regroup because I'm looking at my to-do list from today. And I haven't got a lot ticked off. So what I'm gonna do now and, and why I'm running out to get this card is I, I'm gonna break this down into some smaller tasks first, get those done and out of the way and then tackle the bigger ones. I all too often find myself getting really into something that's such a long slog of a task that I forget all the little ones that could be done really easily. So I'm gonna wipe all those off the list and then get on with editing, which is like my big main thing today. That can take a good couple of hours. So I wanna sit down later and, uh, and get into that. But first I'm gonna try and tick off some of these other smaller things, get myself packed up and then I will feel a lot better. So let's go and do that. This very adorable card, which is literally me and Joe. The avocado is even wearing Joe's glasses. Does anybody else do cards, Valentine's cards or cards in general? I feel like a card is uh, almost expected 
on a social occasion like a birthday or Christmas or Valentine's Day but does anybody keep them? I personally do. I have a stack of cards sitting somewhere in the wardrobe um, that I probably will never open again but I just I can't bear to part with them because I'm that person. So this you know could end up getting thrown in the bin but at least the thought was there. I also got I walked past a bakery and couldn't resist because every shop window right now is just full of love hearts and ribbons and I'm not one to buy into that but when it comes to sugar and cake I'm not gonna say no. Very cute. I think they're fond of fancies. Um, I bought two because one of them may be intended for me. So I got those and then I went into um, a bookshop. We were in another bookshop, we were in Brick Lane and he saw a book that he wanted to read. All I had to go by was like a quick flash of his phone that he showed me and the general premise that it had something to do with the world. Very useful information. So I was looking and looking and I could not find anything. Um, so I actually went outside and called the Brick Lane Bookshop and um, spoke to a very, very lovely woman who listened to all my terrible explanations and managed to find something which I'm pretty sure is the one, she went and looked on the bookshelf for me um, based on the fact that it was blue and had a map on it. <laughs> and I ended up getting this, which is Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall. It's actually a bestseller, so I think it's pretty well known, although I've never heard of it. And it's 10 maps that tell you everything you need to know about global politics. So it's a book about geography and politics, which to some may not seem like the most interesting, but I think it's supposed to be really, really good. The woman on the phone told me um, that she was reading it and that she was quite into it. So hopefully this is the right one. And Joe, once you're done with it, I may have to steal this from you because I'm kind of intrigued now. I think he's about to walk in the door any second. So I am gonna go and hide these and uh, eat my Greg's vegan sausage roll, which I also picked up while I was outside. So, that is one we can tick off the list. Oh, I've also done this one this morning and that gets ticked off too. This one I am gonna have to migrate to tomorrow, which I think is my migration symbol. Let's see, yep, that's right. So all that is left to do is vlog, which is what I'm doing now, and pack. I think we're pretty much on schedule. Four o'clock, pack for Suffolk, not too bad. I have a feeling this is not going to happen, which is a shame, but hey, you know what? At the end of the day, I am on holiday. Mm -hmm.